Sponsored by Rabbi Shlemi and Mirla Greenwald. This is a sicha from Lukot HaSichas, Chelek Yud Beis, Parshas Vayikro Sicha Aleph. And the topic of the sicha is that in this week's parsha we learned the Pasuk of Adam Ki Yaakov Mikem, Karben LaHashem, and two teachings of Rashi on this Pasuk. And there are four parts in the sicha. The Rebbe will, number one, present the apparent explanation of these two Rashis. Number two, ask five questions on Rashi. Number three, present the key to understanding Rashi. And number four, based on this, answer the five questions. There are also two bullet points here. The Sikh will also include in it an attempted answer for two of the questions on Rashi, which the Rebbe will challenge and reject. And there will also be a side question and discussion on a detail of the answer, and that will come at the very end of the Sikha. On the Pasuk, at the beginning of our Parsha, where it says, Adam ki Yaakov mikem, karben la Hashem gamer, so Rashi quotes the words, Adam ki Yaakov mikem, and he explains, kishe Yaakov v'karbonis nedava dibera inyan. That the discussion over here is about karbonus nedava, karbonus that a person donates, as opposed to karbonus that a person is obligated to bring. So, in terms of understanding this Rashi, it seems that Rashi is saying that the word key, which the word key means if, so that means that it's saying that bringing the carbon depends on the person's desire to do so, because it says if adam ki yakv mikem, a person if he brings. From among you, that means this is something which is up to the person. So it seems that Rashi is saying that this word ki indicates that it's talking about karbanis and adava, which are up to the person to bring if and when he wants to bring them, and not karbanis chayva, which a person is obligated to bring. However, the question on this is if the proof is from the words ki yakriv, then why does Rashi quote the words? Adam and Mikem as well. Rashi quotes Adam ki Yaakov Mikem. According to our explanation, Rashi should have just quoted from the Pasuk the words ki Yaakov. Afterwards, Rashi quotes the word Adam and he explains Lama Namar, why does the Pasuk say Adam? Ma Adam Rishin Lahikriv Menagazel, because just like Adam Rishin, didn't bring any karbonas from stolen items, shakol hoyashaloi, because everything belonged to him. So af atem le you as well don't bring any karbonas from things that are stolen. So in understanding this Rashi, we can't say that the question Lama Namar is that the word Adam is extra, because we find that the Pasak will often start with saying Adam or Ish. And even though here it says Adam and Mikem, and so one of them are extra, because if we say ki yakriv mikem, then there's no reason to say adam. And if we say adam ki yakriv, there's no reason to say mikem. And so one of them are extra. But then the question would not be on adam, because when we read the word adam, everything is fine. It only comes up when we have the word mikem. So then the question should be mikem lama namar. Why does it say mikem? But we see that Rashi doesn't ask that. He asks Adam Lama Namar. And so therefore we must say, like Mepharshim explained, that the question is, why does it say Adam and not Ish? And the Rebbe is going to ask four questions on this Rashi. But first we're going to ask two of them, present an answer that's given by some Mepharshim and challenge and reject that answer, and then present the other two questions. So, the first of these four questions and the second question in the Sikha is what's the reason it should say Ish and not Adam if both of them are common? What's the understanding to this question of Rashi that why does it say Adam and not Ish? Why should it say Ish any more than Adam? Both the use of the word Adam and Ish are common. The third question is why does Rashi first explain the words Adam ki Yaakov Mikem and then the word Adam? The order should be the opposite. First, Rashi should explain the word Adam, which is the first of these words, and then explain all four of these words together.
regarding these last two questions of why is it better to say ish than to say adam and why rashi first explains the words adam kiyakov mikem and only afterwards the word adam so there are those mafarshan who explain that actually one question is answered by the other question because before we prove that the pasuk is talking about karbanas nadava so we could explain that it's talking about karbanas chayva and that's why it says adam and not ish because Chazal tell us that Atim Kuryam Adam, only Yidin are called Adam, but non-Jews are not called Adam, and so therefore it says Adam in order to exclude non-Jews, because non-Jews are not obligated in Karbanas Cheva. However, after we point out that Kiyakov indicates that the Pasuk is talking about Karbanas Nadava, which as we learn in Masech Chulin, also non-Jews may bring Karbanas Nadava, so then the question arises, why does it say Adam? which is a term that excludes non-Jews, and not ish, which does not exclude non-Jews. So that explains to us now why the term ish is better, and also why the question on Adam only comes up after Rashi first explains to us, on the words Adam ki Yaakov Mikem, that it's talking about Karbanas Nadava. However, we can't say this answer for Rashi, and for three reasons. When we look at this answer, it's basically built on two points. Number one, that the word Adam excludes non-Jews. And number two, that non-Jews are allowed to bring Karbanas and Dava. And there's a problem with each saying each of these things in Rashi. Let's start with this point that Adam excludes non-Jews. There are actually three problems with saying that. Number one, from where do we know that only Yidin are called Adam? When we look up Shuddha Shemikra, where do we know that from? And number two, to the contrary, we find places where Adam in Pshutosh Mikra includes non-Jews, and places even before our Pasuk. And number three, especially since Rashi doesn't say anything on the Pasuk, Adam Kiyamas Ba'ayl, which that is the source where it's learned from that Adam doesn't include non-Jews. Rashi doesn't say on that Pasuk that Adam only means Jews. So on saying that Adam excludes non-Jews, we have three problems with that. Now let's move on to the other point, that non-Jews may bring Karbanas and Dava. That's also problematic for Rashi, because from where do we know at this point that non-Jews may bring Karbanas and Dava? At this point in our learning, we don't know that yet. To the contrary, since we later have a special teaching for that, that means that we don't know of it yet. And so if we don't know of it yet, then Rashi won't include that in his teaching over here. He doesn't include in his teachings things that we don't know of yet. And then there's the third question. And that is on the wording of Rashi. Rashi says, Adam Loma Neymar. Why does it say Adam? The question shouldn't be why it says Adam according to this. But rather it should be how does it say Adam? Not why does it say Adam. We don't want to know why it's written Adam. We want to know how does it say Adam. If Adam only means Jews and not non-Jews, how can it say that if it's talking about Karbanas and Dava, which also non-Jews are allowed to bring as a carbon? And so for these three reasons, for these three reasons, this answer won't fit for Rashi. The fourth question on Rashi is, why doesn't Rashi explain the word Mikem? We explained earlier that the word mikem is extra. Once it says adam ki yakriv, then the word mikem is an extra word. So why doesn't Rashi explain the need for the word mikem? And the fifth question is, and here we have it in very short, the fifth question is that when we look at the source for Rashi's teaching over here, we find it both in the Medrash Rabbah and in the Tanchuma. However, it's a little different. In the Medrash Rabbah, it says, that other Mauritian didn't bring any carbonas from stolen items, Shakol Hoya Shaloi. Over there it says Shakol Hoya Bershusei. In Rashi it's Shakol Hoya Shaloi. That everything was in his possession, that everything was his. And the Tanchuma's reasoning is that other Mauritian didn't bring any carbonas from stolen items, Shahoya Yachid Ba'ilamai, because he was alone in his world. And so the question is, why does Rashi choose the reasoning of the Medrash Shraba over that of the Tanchuma? And also, what is the difference between these two different points of the Medrash Rabbah and the Tanchuma?
The explanation in all of this is as follows. So this is the key to the Sikha. This is going to lead into the answers to all of our questions. So we're going to lay down a certain idea over here, and based on that, we're going to be able to answer all of our questions. So on a simple level, since our parsha is the beginning of the teaching about Karbonus, so it makes sense that it's talking about Karbonus Cheva, which are the main type and the required type of Karbonus. Those are the first Karbonus that should be taught. And therefore, if it's at all possible, we will explain that the parsha is talking about Karbonus Cheva unless there's a clear proof that the parsha is talking about Karbonus Nadava. And with this in place, we're now going to be able to understand and be able to answer all of the questions that we had on Rashi. So this is why Rashi quotes all the words Adam Kiyakov Mikem. Our first question was, why does Rashi quote the words Adam Kiyakov Mikem? He should have just quoted the words Kiyakov and told us that these words indicate that it's Korbanus Nadava. But based on what we just explained, we can understand why Rashi quotes all four words. Because from Kiyakov alone, we don't have enough proof that it's talking about Karbanis Nadava. And we said that if we're at all able to, we're going to explain this Pasuk to be talking about Karbanis Cheva. And with just, with, from just the words Kiyakov, we are not compelled to say that it's Karbanis Nadava. We can still say that it's Karbanis Cheva. How are we able to do this? Because we explained that in Pshut Mikra, the word Adam doesn't exclude non-Jews, but rather it actually includes them. And therefore, we should have to explain that the Pasuk is talking about Karbanis Cheva, things that are obligatory, they're an obligation, and the reason it says Ki Yakriv, which indicates that it's optional, it's a Rishus, so that is because it also includes non-Jews, and for them, the bringing of the Karban is is not a Chayva, but rather a Roshos. So if the Pasuk only said, Adam Ki Yakriv, we would explain it's talking about Karbanis that a person has to bring. A Yid is obligated to bring these Karbanis. They're Karbanis Chayva. And the reason why it says Ki Yakriv, if he brings it, meaning that it's a Roshos, is because it says Adam, which includes non-Jews. And for non-Jews, who are allowed to bring karbanas cheva, the bringing of those karbanas is optional. It's a rishus. And therefore Rashi quotes the word mikem. So this answers our fourth question. We asked, why doesn't Rashi explain the word mikem? He does explain it by quoting it over here. Rashi quotes the word mikem to emphasize that it's only talking about yidin. It says mikem from among you, from among the Jewish people. And therefore, kiyakrav must mean that it's talking about karbanas nadava. Because it says, if a Jew brings, if a Jew brings, if it's Karbanas Cheva, there's no if. He has to bring it. And so from the words, Ki Yaakov Mikem, we see that it's talking about Karbanas Nadava. If one among you brings it, this is not a carbon that he has to bring. However, we can still say that it's talking about Karbanas Cheva, even if we have the word Mikem. And the reason it says Ki Yaakov, if the person brings even those karbanas cheva that a Jew is bringing and he has to bring them, it's not a rishus. So the reason it says kiyakrav, which means rishus, is because it also includes when a person brings a carbon for what he did when he was a katan. We're talking about a gadol, a person that's bringing a carbon when he's already a gadol, but he's bringing it for an avera that he did when he was a katan, which is only a rishus. So we're going to explain the pasuk to be saying. Ki Yaakov Mikem, from among you if someone brings a carbon chayva. Why does it say if? Because we're also including over here a person that doesn't have to bring the carbon chayva because he did the avera while he was a katan. But according to this, the Pasuk should have used the term ish, which emphasizes that the person is now a gadol, because ish means that the person is a gadol as opposed to a katan. And therefore, Rashi also quotes the word adam, which indicates that it, has, that it has nothing to do with age. And so now we understand why Rashi quotes all four words, because it's only through all four of these words that we have a compelling proof that the Pasuk is talking about Karbanas Nadava. And we also see how Rashi is explaining the word Mikem, that the word Mikem is over here in order to prove to us that it's talking about Karbanas Nadava and not Karbanas Chayva. However, according to this, it's enough to just write Mikem, to exclude non-Jews. The Pasuk should have just written Ki Yaakov Mikem, 
And we know to exclude non-Jews because it says Mikem. And in order to exclude the case of a Katan, we don't have to write Adam. It's enough to just not write Ish. Because if we're talking about the case of a Katan that is now a Gadol and is bringing a carbon for what he did when he was a Katan, then the Torah would be required to write the word Ish to bring that point across. And so in order to exclude the case of Katan, it's enough to just not write Ish. And so Rashi asks by, about the word Adam, Lama Nemar. Why does the Torah say, why does the Pasuk say the word Adam? So this answers our second and third questions on Rashi. The second question was, what's the reason of the question for Rashi that why does it say Adam? And we understood originally that the question was, why Adam and not Ish? It should have said Ish. And our question was, why is Ish any better than Adam? But now that's not the meaning of the question. The question is, why is the word written at all? And Rashi's third, the third question on Rashi was that Rashi should first explain Adam and then Adam ki Yaakov Mikem. But now we understand the order because it's only after we explain the words Adam ki Yaakov Mikem that we now have a question. Why is the word Adam written? And regarding our last question, why does Rashi say Shakol Hayashalai? So we're going to just start it off over here, but we're going to explain it in the next section. And Rashi answers that Ma Adam Arishin Lahikriv Managazal Shakol Hayashalai. Just like Adam Rishon didn't bring a carbon from stolen animals because everything was his, so to you shouldn't bring a carbon from stolen animals. But Rashi does not write that he was alone in his world, only that everything was his. The reason for this is, and that will explain in the next section. Now the difference between these two Lashainas, these two reasonings is as follows. When you say Shehu HaYachad Ba'ilamai, which is what the Tanchuma says, so this means that he didn't have from who to steal from. But when you say Shehakal HaYashalai, which is what the Medrash Rabbah and Rashi says, so this means that there wasn't what to steal, because everything belonged to him. Now, when we look at it, we don't find in the Torah, in Pshut Mikra, that Adam Rishon brought a carbon. We don't see that he actually brought a carbon at any point in time. And so therefore, Rashi must learn that it means that he wasn't able ever to bring from anything that was stolen. And not that when he brought a carbon, he didn't actually bring it from something that was stolen. Because we don't find that he brought a carbon. So it must mean that he wasn't able to bring from something that was stolen. And therefore, it's difficult to say the reason of the Tanchuma, Shuhu HaYayachad Ba'ilamai since that was for a very short period of time. Because on the day, on the very day, that Adam Rishon was created, Chava was also created, and Cain and Hevel were born. Now according to the Tanchuma, we can say that the Tanchuma holds that actually Adam Rishon brought a carbon, he actually did bring a carbon, and before even Chava was created. And so the Tanchuma could say, Shehu HaYayachad Ba'ilamai at that time. But in Pshut HaShemikra, we don't find that Adam Rishon brought a carbon at all. And even if you want to say that Adam Rishon did bring a carbon, and you're going to say that it's in Pshut HaShemikra, since that's probably where Cain and Hevel learned it from. But it makes sense that it was as a kapara for the Chet Etzadas. And at that point, he was no longer alone, because Chava was already created. That's besides for the fact that, as the Rebbe elaborates, Adam was very busy before the creation of Chava, and so it's unlikely that he had time to bring a carbon. So first of all, it was probably for a kapara, and also it's difficult that he to say that he had time to bring a carbon beforehand. So it was probably as a kapara, meaning after Chava was born, and so after Chava was created, and so he was no longer Yachid Ba'ilamai. And therefore Rashi says, Sha'akol HaYashalai, everything was his, meaning that everything became his right when he was created, and he didn't lose the ownership after others were created. It still remained his, and so therefore he was unable to bring a carbon from anything that was stolen, since at the moment he was created, everything became his property, his possessions, and he didn't lose the ownership after others were created. And even though we must say that others also own possessions, Adam Rishon lived for 930 years and he had sons and, and family, so we, even though we must say that others also own possessions during the lifetime of Adam Rishon, but that's like sons at their father's table, that it's his and he let them have it. And even if we say that Adam Rishon fully gifted it to them, then since it was done based on his own decision and they are his family, so certainly he wouldn't steal from them. And so that would be the meaning, either it was entirely his or these were items that he would never steal. And so there wasn't what to steal. 
And that's why Rashi chooses Shakola Yishaloi and not Shuhua Yochid Bailame. And that's the difference between these two reasonings given by the Tanchuma and the Medrash Rabbah. We're just going to move on now to a side discussion. There's a question over here on what we just said. However, we have to understand how did everything become the property of other Mershon right when he was created? If it's obvious in Pshut Shemikra that in order to acquire something, there must be a Kenyan. Some type of active acquisition has to be done. How did other Mershon acquire everything in the world right when he was created? And it's difficult to say that other Mershon did an effective Kenyan on everything in the world. And all in the short amount of time before Chav was created. However, from the fact that Rashi writes simply Shakol HaYashalai without any explanation, this proves that it's so simple that it doesn't even have to say anything. And the question is, what is the explanation to this? Now, as an answer to this question, so some want to prove from here that if there is ever an object that nobody owns. There's such a case, there's an object that nobody owns it and only one person in the world can acquire it. However, you could imagine that scenario, but here we had it with other version that there were objects in the world, many objects that nobody owned, and there's only one person in the world that could acquire it. Other version. So there are those who want to prove from here, then in such a case, it becomes that person's without any Kenyan. Now this happens to fit with the opinion that Hefker belongs to everyone, that means if there's an item that nobody owns, what does that mean nobody owns it? So there are two opinions. One opinion says that nobody owns it, and a person has to make an opinion, an act of ac- acquiring it, in order to become the owner. However, there are others that say that Hefker means that everybody owns it. And the purpose of the Kenyan is that the person should remove everybody else's ownership from it. So this idea fits with saying that Hefker belongs to everyone, and the Kenyan is to remove it from everyone else. So in this case, where there is no everyone else, there's nobody else in the world in the time when other mission was created, so there was no need for a Kenyan just to remove their ownership, and he already owned it. However, the Rebbe says this, this is a difficult answer, because even in Halacha, this concept is difficult, it's not so simple, and in terms of being an answer for Rashi, this is a big Chiddush, and Rashi should have to say it. So it's not possible that this is what Rashi has in mind. And so our question remains... What is the explanation that's also so simple that Rashi doesn't have to say anything for the fact that other Mershon owned everything in the world even though he didn't do a Kenyan on it? So the answer to this will be understood based on what the Alter Rebbe writes in the Shulchan Aruch, that a king who conquered a city in a war, so he acquires the city with all its lakes and all the other cities there, etc. For the whole land in its entirety, with the rivers and forests, are in the possession of the king, whether it be his country or a country that he conquers in a war. And so when we bring this here to other mission, so other mission being alone in the world, so everything belonged to him like a king, and especially as all living things were conquered by him. Like Rashi says in... Perik Beis of Bereshis, Pasuk Yotes. It says in the Pasuk, Vayitzar Hashem Alekim. So Rashi says, Ovedivri Agada, Yotziru Zu Lashin Ridoi Vichibosh, Shekvashan Tachas Yadei Shel Adam. That Hashem was kavish under the hand, under the power of Adam, Kol Chayas Asada, Veis Kol Eif Hashemayim, everything in the world. And so Adam Rishon had this status of like a king. And this is understood in Pshut HaShemikah without any explanation, as we see by Sichrin and Mayav. The Rashi tells us that how were the Yidin able to take the land of Mayav? And he explains because Sichrin took it under his property, under his ownership, when he conquered those lands, and then they became permitted to the Yidin. So even though the Yidin were not allowed to take lands from Mayav, but since they were conquered by Sichrin, they became permitted to the Yidin. And Rashi doesn't explain this concept of how when Sichin conquered them, they became his, because it's self-understood. Rashi there is just explaining to us how through this process, the lands of Mayav became permitted. But the the idea itself, that when Sichin conquered those lands, they became his, Rashi doesn't explain it, because it's self-understood in Pshut HaShemekra. And so to over here, other Mishnah was like a king of the entire world, and so automatically, everything in the world belonged to him.